Welcome back to Fumiko. Let's see how deep this rabbit hole goes. I have a bit of an embarrassing secret. I sometimes I just can't function without proper amounts of candy. I swear I'm an I'm an adult. I had to do a candy run today, and I was fairly low on, you know, on food and stuffs in general. But most importantly, I need I got some gushers. I got some some breezes. Some sorted stuff. Sometimes I just... I guess it's the sugar and the whole... You know... Maybe the rewarding yourself aspect too. But, uh... Pretty colors. But, um... I don't know. I just feel dreary and bleh. Without at least some degree of sweets and stuff in the house. Since you're long, longer restricted by the I am testing environment, your algorithms will improve over time. You've learned a new ability. You know, jump three times. Oh hell yeah! Wee. Okay, this is looking a lot better too. Cause the first, I was wondering, you've reached the exit of Cronus. The first area is kind of like, I guess, deliberately, you know, bare bones and stuff. But uh, we got some stuff going on now, which is interesting. You've arrived at the exit of Cronus. This area is guarded by I am security robots. Bypassing the security mechanism will result in all penalties described in Article One of the Network Breach Law. Which is the media deletion from the network. Have a fun visit and return soon. Uh oh. They're firewall bots. These firewall bots are more annoying than dangerous. Also, their behavior is rather stupid. They follow you for a certain distance. Disrupt your movement on touch. I don't even see the firewall robots, but things are bumping me. Just try to avoid them. I guess the something bumped me. I guess it was the firewall robot. It, something pushed me. Is that them? Oh, that's a robot? I thought that was just, like, you know, atmospheric garbage. Okay, that's... The firewall robot is just... The windows of DOS code. Makes sense. Oh, man, this makes me really want uh, a dot hack on next gen or current gen, you know, whatever. On PS4. Um, just, just give it to me. They made a weird, like, spin off, not in the same universe mobile game um, the developers did. And I don't know how well that turned out, but I'm assuming not great, but. I just really want, like, because the, the PS2 games, they, they were a little cheap in terms of how they showed, you know, the glitchiness of stuff. They were still really great story-wise. Um, but gameplay-wise, they were fairly rough, and, and the glitchiness, like I said, it was a little, it was a little cheap. Um, I mean, in some ways, like, the, the code, um, they could have done a lot of really cool stuff with in terms of, like, exposing the code, but it was just, like, these weird orange patches in the wall. And... I, don't know, I would love to see how they do that and you know a decent budget ps4 game i think it could be really amazing i don't i know cyber connect 2 is very busy with like making 15 naruto games every year but i would really love to see that i still need to catch up on this stuff does anybody know which what's the best stuff to get like i haven't really caught up since dot um since gu on ps2 but i hope to eventually watch and read and play all of the different things they put out. I'm presenting a dissertation today on the necessity of modularity when developing an AI. Creating a set of core functionality to interpret a limitless amount of modules independent of size, preferably smaller, should make it easier to extend and modify the behaviors. It should also ease the process of opening your system to the bizarre. People who don't have to understand your sources but know how to create a single module are more likely to add something to your system. Oh, the bizarre as in, like, a marketplace. But I don't know if I can convince anybody with that. Some good colors going on this game. Too many games. Oh, this reminds me. I need to play Bound. I got uh, I got a copy of that. Oh, security bot. Um, yeah, I need to get that there, Bound. Well, I, I got that there, Bound. I just haven't played it. It's one of those games that, like, I know I will like, so I end up... Oh, hey. I see secrets. Uh, it's one of those games I know I will like, so I then end up not playing it because I, I know I will like it, so I need to be in the right mood, and it's weird. Memory pieces left in this area, too. Where's the memory pieces, though? I want the memory bits. 
Well, I guess if we climb all the way to the top, it'll be easier to see stuff. I hope they show it, like, as some draw distance issues in terms of that, but I see one over here. Uh-oh. Terminal velocity, hello there. Um... Oh, there we go. That was a little close. Question marks? Recently has been... Are they hard to tell if a visitor on my home world server is a legit person or just a really good ad bot? I seem to trick my any blocker system with fake identities, intelligent, human-like behavior, and private information. So it always looks like it's just some good old friend knocking on your door. After an hour into conversation, you can notice that they're trying to change the subject to whatever they're trying to advertise. That seems really expensive for an ad bot. Trying to bullshit babbling monster that doesn't want you to leave your home anymore. Sometimes I wish back to the JavaScript pop-ups of early 2000. Sometimes. <laughs> Find five memory fragments. Is that a Smeekrit or a Respawn Orb? I don't like that the Respawn Orbs are the same color as the Smeekrits. Because I only really care about the Smeekrits. Oh, little digital birds! I love incidental wildlife. That's one of the things I found the coolest about um, Horizon Zero Dawn. Fantastic game. I don't usually talk AAA stuff here. And that's unlikely to change. But I did do a couple streams of it. But yeah, I really love that game. Ah, um, oh, there we go. I knew there would be one at the top. Actually, didn't we already find one at the top? Anyway, I knew it would be a good place to look. Um, yeah, just games with incidental wildlife make the world feel a lot more alive and stuff. Speaking of feeling alive and dot .hack, um, so in the dot .hack 2 PS2 games, I really need to stream these someday. But they're so long and... PS2, so it's going to be ugly no matter what I do. I can either get a real PS2 again and stream in 480p, which I might do, or I can do an emulator, but then everything, like, emulators are not perfect for PS2 by any means, and the text ends up looking bad, or you can either get bad 2D or bad 3D is the way emulators tend to work, um, at least for older systems. Because, like, if you increase the resolution, you get weird artifacts in the 2D stuff, and if you don't increase the resolution, the 3D looks bad. It's kind of, yeah. It's why the PS2 on PS4 stuff is a bit more impressive than uh, than most people probably think. Speaking of PS2 on PS4, um, even if that's all it was, I would definitely replay the Dot uh, .hack games if they came to PS4. Um, though I really wish they would do a remake of the first four Dot .hack games. Really could use a remake. They um, the combat system was kind of awkward in that. GU they could do a remaster and that would be fine, or like a like just a PS2 on PS4 that would be fine really. Anyway, people should stop trying to protect me. I'm the only one deciding what I use my life want to use my life for. It's not being an everyday nice guy with a decent job, one of those big data centers with a family and at least two kids. I tried that once, not doing that again. I like this guy. He's got he's got a good head on his shoulders. That hole. You don't need, don't, don't live your life because of that default, you know, you need to get married, you need to get your two kids, two plus kids, you need to do whatever. Nah, do, make, this looks like an exit, you know, make of your life what you want. If you want to make some kind of change, you do that, you know, this looks like an exit. Sometimes you can find data fragments in an area. Yeah, I know that. I'm sure you didn't miss anything and leave here. Um... Yeah, we already we already were pretty picky about that. Um, oh yeah, but I want to talk about dot hack and incidental like wildlife sort of. But dot hack on PS2, the first four games had these things called I think they were called like legendary lands or something. And it's like every once in a while on certain maps on the server, you would look up and there would be like this giant floating thing. Like on one, it was like a bunch of floating bodies and like there was a bunch of floating ships with this floating like mummy in the middle, like a giant. And it, it was there on a bunch of different maps and it, it just made the world feel alive. Like all of the different maps were overseeing the same big alien thing floating in the sky. <clears throat> and then at the end of the game, you could actually go to that. It was an actual dungeon. And then on the fourth series, or on the fourth game in the series, there were these creepy eyes that would appear. And uh, there was never a dungeon for that, so there were kind of a mystery. It was really cool. I think it was called Apocalypse or something, the, the eye that appeared down here. That's right, Parker. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I can't recommend the Dot .hack series enough. It's, it's kind of a tricky one to recommend, like, in terms of, like, it's definitely 
like hit or miss because uh, it's got some complex stuff. It's got some. It's got some intentional crypticness. Some, I mean, a lot of intentional crypticness going on. Um, the first series of PS2 games are a little hard to play. They're like, they went for this fake MMO thing, and they went too hard in trying to make it feel like an MMO because the menus, it, it's clunky. It's clunky. GU played more like a normal game, um, but the story is better than the first four. And you really, it's a, it's a series you play for the story. Um, but there's cool stuff to collect and stuff too. It's it wasn't terrible, but it was a lot easier to play in PS2. It was one of those games that it didn't feel that bad when you're playing it back then, but it feels worse now. Anyway, this game, this, this game reminds me of Dot Hack so much, and, and it makes me feel good things. But I should also talk about the game. Anyway, welcome to the Cluster Connector of Cronus and Hyperion. All right, this is this guy. The size of this place never fails to impress me. I cannot predict what will happen here. You have to find the exit by yourself. Parker, get your tail out of my face! I have allergies because of you! Do you know what you have done to me? I have been sniffling all day. I want to record so much more. Good luck, Fumiko. <clears throat> you have learned a new ability. Press and hold... Oh. B or shift to dash. Why, why B? Why not RT? Can I change that? Yeah, I don't think I can change that, unfortunately. Whatever, I'll keep that in mind. Howdy! You're leaving the Cronus Cluster! Please prepare your authorization keys to avoid sudden deletion! You do not want to be deleted! That would suck. Huh? Oh, I thought Parker muted the music or something. He's got his tail on the keyboard. Which is always very dangerous. Mur, 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 mur. I should probably lock the keyboard. You're very dangerous, Parker. Yes. Oh, we got a thing. No! No, 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 no! Whew. Okay. Any data fragments here? Three? Really? But where? Oh. What you're seeing in the distance is an en enomia. It's also called the Collector. The security bots floating in this area are nothing compared to this. It is advertised by as an AI, but it is actually a fully fledged network control system. The IM is using it to detect terrorists. This includes us, at least by their understanding. Oh, so that's that is bad thing. Are, are we we're running for the bad thing? I thought it was heading towards this direction. I'm not entirely sure where to go. I, I gotta say, I, when I saw the thing about lowering the price of the game, I was worried it was not a good game. I don't really have any major qualms so far, but hey. Maybe it's a little short, maybe... I don't know. Not every game does well, and lowering the price of game is pretty common in response to that. Um, doesn't always mean the game is bad. That's kind of why I started this channel, is to show off um cool games i that are you know a little underrated that's why i don't i thought maybe i was supposed to go in that i don't think i was nope um but yeah that's kind of why I, I i've i've been meaning to make it clear that my pitch my pitch for the channel and stuff but you know sharing cool underrated games is kind of my thing and that's why you know Kind of different stuff every day of the week, or at least every week if I do it like a series. Um, won't always be the best stuff ever, but hey, sometimes you want to see something just different. And sometimes, you know, you got to play experimental stuff. I don't always know what's going to be good, but I don't deliberately play anything that I think is like straight up bad. I am totally confused as to what the hell to do right now, though. I will say that much. Um, I see a memory, though, so I'm going to get the memories. Okay, that's not good. Um, how do I get... Where is... Okay. Hmm? The Enuma has been granted additional authority today. 
New permissions mostly affect the hubs and connections between them. It makes it extremely difficult to send files to travel back to the network without being noticed, scanned, or registered. This is absolutely not what the network designers was designed for. Uh, encryption? Like, like we already have, like, n not unhackable, but, like, not worth attempting to hack encryption on, uh, end-to-end -end encryption on, uh, a large amount of the internet, which is actually pretty amazing um, that we've managed to get so far fairly quickly. Um, HTTPS uh, means even my website, even my um, fairly small 20 bucks a month um, simple domain. Howdy! Yeah, we already read that. Uh, wait, did we read that? Well, too late now. Uh, excuse me! Why am I spinning? Parky, get your feet off the keyboard! What have you done? Okay, I have locked the keyboard. <laughs> Thanks for your assistance, Parker. I thought like I was at the invisible wall or something, but it was just Parker putting his feet on the arrow keys. Thanks, Parker. You're a big help. If you ever if you ever find video games too easy, you know, you're playing your tenth Dark Souls run, you're like, nah, this is just this is baby stuff. Just just get a cat. Just get a cat. Everything is so much harder. It's great. It's hardcore mode for real life. It's also hardcore mode for my freaking allergies as he whips his tail. For some his tail is is the main like I don't know if cat tails shed more, but his tail seems to be the main cause of the allergies. It's a new games kids are playing now. One of these ga FPS games are available on hubs where you're fully immersed with your personal avatar. Traveling along dark hunt tunnels in the hope of finding another player. Do you attempt to kill them or create a party? The thrill of the game is not is that if you're killed, you're also losing your virtual avatar. Since created from the expensive skins on the network, you're actually losing real money. It sounds awful, actually. But it's sad to see those kids wasting so much money. Just play normal games! Play games that don't suck! But why would you do this to yourself? Uh, I never got the appeal of the survival genre in general. <laughs> and the concept of adding losing real money on top of that. Like, I'm sure there's an audience that would actually love that, but that sounds like... That just sounds awful. It's like, it's it's trolling as a video game, which I guess is the appeal. Because a lot of people do like trolling, but no, it's kind of the opposite of my entire existence, really. To be dramatic about it. But yeah, I... I always wanted to, you know, make the world a better place. You know, make things easier for people. Uh-oh. Those things are back. I don't know if I'm... I think I'm going the wrong way. I think this is where I came from. So I think those arrow things... Is that... I think that's... Is that where I spawned in? Or is this escape? Yep, that's where I spawned in. Frick. Then where... I, I don't know where to go then. Slight problem. Ah, oh, frick. I don't know where that other memory fragment is either. Yeah, kind of the reason I do my channel is to, you know, help people find enjoyable things, help people find games that, uh... Maybe not even just fun, maybe, you know, help you understand some things. I know a lot of people that have, uh... They've, you know, been able to understand themselves a bit better. From uh, from games, especially from uh, a lot of trans developers that I've uh, met on Twitter, they kind of learned about themselves from playing games. So I think it's really important for you know identity in general. I can definitely see how you know being able to freely be this other being can help you feel you know what's most comfortable for you. What what are you really what are you really feeling? You know. I think that's I think that's pretty powerful. And I never like there's a lot of people that like well not, maybe not a lot, but there's a certain set of people that I, I mostly respect, but they really hate the whole empathy game thing. And I mean there's definitely ways to do it wrong, but man, I have no idea where I'm supposed to go. Um I don't think games like like stuff like um a normal lost phone, stuff like that, like they think that's like bad. That's, you know, oh, you think you're learning things, but you're not. And uh, 
uh, it was the developer of Euphoria. Um, she she posts this blog post about, oh, you think you have learned things, but you have not learned things. Um, and that's just like, uh, who are you to be like, oh, no, you, you don't actually, you know, appreciate things. You don't actually respect trans people more now that you played my game. Fuck you. It's like, no. If somebody, you know, feels like they've, like, you can't tell people... Like, here's the thing about art. Artists don't entirely own their own art. Once it's put out in the world, people can interpret it. And just because you disagree with the artist's interpretation doesn't necessarily make you wrong. And I mean, especially with something like empathy, like, if you feel you understand a topic better, I mean, as long as you're not being an asshole and doing something actually wrong, like, who, who is an artist to say, like, no? My art, my art about, you know, understanding trans people did not actually make you understand trans people. You, you think that you respect people now, but actually, no, because I am artiste. I am an artiste, Parker. His ears are back. But yeah, basically don't be an asshole. That's, that's kind of my whole thing. Don't be an asshole. If, if you are an asshole, try talking less. I don't know. Anyway, Inomia must have detected your activity and started an additional file scanner. I know this type of search algorithm. It's looking for changes in the area and does a fast scan for any new file or application. If an anomaly is detected, the scanner kills the computer process tree and deletes all files associated with it. That seems kind of overkill. Your self-defense mechanisms hopefully prevent that from happening, but you should still avoid the scanners at all costs. Be careful, you should be able to reach the other side undetected. I found an exit at the node of the scanner. Okay, scanner. So we do have to go closer to it. All right, but we're missing a memory thing, which I, th I don't know if we can go back. I don't want to miss a thing. But yeah, my main problem was like, like with Euphoria, people were like saying like, oh, oh shit, I, I understand now. And like, I, you know, I don't think trans people are weirdos anymore. And then for you, for even the artists of the original work to look at them and be like, no, you don't understand more now. You suck and then you're stupid because I'm the artiste. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, is that not why you made art? Like, I don't know. People can change and people can be assholes. Even artists can be assholes. So just because an artist says something, you know, you don't have to... You know, you don't have to take that as word of God. Like GIF, GIF is pronounced GIF. I don't care what the creator of the file format says. You know, I don't have to respect them. You know, there's a degree of respect that you should have for an artist, and you know, general interpretations of their work. But there's a limit to that. So I'm just going into the maw of this thing. Is that is that what we're doing? But I mean, I mean, this I can see some degree of the complaint with the empathy games is that you know people play a game and they think they totally understand everything. And I mean, sure, they don't understand everything. You know, obviously you don't understand the complete experience of being a trans person because you played Euphoria, which takes like you know five minutes. Um, but if people you know played it and they're like, oh, I don't, I don't think trans people are freaks anymore. Like, who the fuck are you to look down on people for that? Like, what the fuck? Like, that's... I'm sorry to get fairly off-topic and a bit sweary, but that's... That's bad. That's... No. And I don't have any inherent respect for artists that would override, like, you know, people losing their hatred over your work and you're gonna get mad at them. Like, no. I'm sorry, but screw you. Uh, your work is more important than you are at that point, and I will, I will totally abandon the artist in a case like that. You know, some people sometimes people do stupid things. You don't always have to. Uh, oh, maybe I'm not supposed to just run into the thing. There's supposed to be a door somewhere. But yeah, that one. I'm sorry to pick on that one developer. I, I maybe I shouldn't have mentioned the game by name, but I think it's a pretty famous story, and I, I just always stuck with me as like, like, why are you pissing on a good thing? 
Like, why would you actively seek to destroy the good that your art has created? I don't... I don't know, man. Sometimes people... Sometimes people are just garbage. Or... They just have reactions that are garbage, even if they are not necessarily garbage people. People fuck up, you know? I'm a people. I have fucked up. It's okay. You just gotta do better. I don't know where the hell anything is. Um, this game could definitely be, like, I love the looks and everything, but like, I, I, I seriously have no idea where to look or where this freaking thing would be. And I think if I go too close, I just die to this thing, which is weird because I thought I was supposed to be going towards this thing. Cause like, that's where the exit would be. Is there like a, oh, f I hate that kill yourself button. That is, I have absolutely never actually wanted to do that. And you can just fall. Like, I understand having a kill switch in a game where like you get stuck or something. But in this game, you could pretty much fall from like anywhere. Oh. I, I think I touched a blue line. Yeah, I'm, there was a gate, but I'm not seeing it. I'm probably just being stupid. I mean, I don't hate the developer of Euphoria or anything either, but I don't, I don't appreciate the whole, the anti-empathy thing of, hey, actually you don't. You, you don't respect trans people more because, because fuck you, I don't know. Oh, there it is. It, we were supposed to go all the way into it. I think it just touched a blue thing. It's a little unclear when you die sometimes. It's just like those blocks from before. No! Okay. We're good. I did waste my double jump though, and I'm- oh. That was so very, very close. I think we're missing a memory. Which sucks, but I don't know. I don't know if I can stand to go back through that. That was a little frustrating, I will admit. Anyway, I'm sure the developer of Euphoria is a good, decent person, maybe. But, I mean, just because somebody's an artist doesn't mean they're a good person either. But, uh, I strongly disagree with them on that point. And, and if art makes you, like, a better person, don't let any artist ever tell you that you're actually not a better person. Like, if you go out there and you stop being a homophobe because you read some, like, art thing, like, I don't know if that's gonna happen to you, but if it does, good job, I guess. But, like, don't let anybody be like, nah, actually, I'm sorry, but you're actually not. You know? Like, what is that? Anyway, that's enough of that rant. I don't know what to expect from this world. Everything looks familiar, but not. There's something haunting me. Something I should know about. Something I've forgotten. What is it? What am I? I don't know, man. I don't I don't know what I am. So wait. Was that a different one? Wait. Is orange pixels me and blue pixels is different person? I'm confused. Fubico, I cannot follow you. The place you're about to enter is not safe for me. Made a fake ID for your avatar. The security system will see you as someone named Martha Wimbledon. They won't recognize you. I cannot say where you have to go. Honestly, I do not know. So much more that you haven't realized yet. You will find a path. Whatever it will look like. Whatever it leads you to. We'll meet again. Okay. I think orange pixels is me. But I thought orange... Like, normal font was me. I'm confused. Whoa! You okay? Alright, well that's Fumiko for today. Today we'll explore Cronus. Or tomorrow, next time. Whatever. Oh, there's books! You know it's going to be a good episode when there's books. 